welcome. Let's give our esteemed guest, Dr. Antoinette Ellis Williams, a round of applause. <laughs> Dr. Antoinette Ellis Williams, let's tell tell us a little about what do you teach here? What is your what are your role at NJCU? I'm a professor of women and gender studies. I teach uh, women's lives. I teach black womanhood. I teach a class on uh, race, class, gender activism. I direct the Lee Hagen Africana Studies Center. Um, and next semester, I will chair African American Studies. Ooh, all right. Let's yeah. love it. Yeah. So let's dive right in, Dr. Okay. Ellis Williams. Starting with the beginning, where were you born? Born in Kingston, Jamaica, Prembacall. What is one of the most memorable things that you uh, have in memory about living in Kingston and on Primitive? Um, <clears throat> family, the community, everybody uh, had an opportunity to raise us. So if you misbehave, um, everyone would know about it. Can you tell us about your accent? My accent? I, I didn't know I had an accent. I didn't. <laughs> yes, I saw that. My accent. Now, um, somebody said that that was going to be your response. Right. That I didn't know I had an accent right. was going to be your response. Right. <laughs> when my accent comes out, it's because I'm comfortable, it's because I'm safe, it's because I do not feel judged. But I like the ability to move in different spaces. But I do think that, uh, and my father said if I get mad, it might come out a little bit. <laughs> but I think my accent has shifted based on. Uh, reactions to identity and also with the desire to be part of a collective black experience that some said you were not a part of and so it has been shaped by all of those things. What was your favorite subject growing up? Probably penmanship. Hmm. Probably penmanship. I like the art of writing. I like the flow of the pencil. Um, I like trying to get it in between the lines. Hmm. Um, I liked how it looked on paper, but I knew that I had to do something that was great, so I thought I would do the sciences. And I think there was a love for science. When I was young, um, a little girl again, uh, there was a lizard and a frog, and so my brother and I, my oldest brother, the one that I tried to set on fire, <laughs> my comrade at the time, we got the lizard and we got the frog. So we said, well, what would happen if we traded their brains? <laughs> Don't you guys do this too? Yes. So, so we, we got them and uh, we cut them open while they were alive and we traded the brain and my grandmother was a seamstress and we sewed up the head. Why are you looking so shocked, uh, Jeff? And we sewed them up and then we let them go because we wanted to see if the, yes, we, they, what we didn't know about was involuntary um, muscle movement. Oh, oh. What I thought was that I was a genius <laughs> and that they were alive because they were moving around and that the lizard would become the frog. But I think I was always interested in science and I was always interested in exploring and I wasn't afraid of, of whatever that blood and all of that, I, I thought that was fascinating. Now, where did you go to college? I went to Seton Hall University. Right here in New Jersey? Right here in New Jersey. What did you love most about your college experience? I love the fact that I became an activist in college. Mm. I love that I took or helped and was part of a group that took over the president's office, the protest tuition for students. I love that we um, held administration accountable. I love that the faculty members embraced me. Um, and it's where I learned so much about myself, about life, it's where I got involved with the uh, free activists, free um, Mandela movement. Mm -hmm. um, my professors became friends and colleagues, and I still uh, continue to be with them today. So um, I loved all of that. How did you decide that this would be your career choice? This was a student submitted question, by the way. It's, it's a great question. I did not intend to uh, become a professor. Um, I started out as a biology major and then was at Seton Hall, at Seton Hall uh, chemistry major and uh, I worked in a hospital and I saw health care up close because I've always been interested in science and I've always been interested in life and, and death and wanted to be involved with it. And I was a candy striper volunteer in high school, right, you know, about candy stripers. And um, then I became a unit clerk while I was at Seton Hall. Um, and I remember uh, the first time that I experienced the death of a person um, at work, uh, 
a woman died. And as it so happened, you know, if you're in the healthcare field, you become numb to it. It becomes very much a functionary thing. And so for me, I'm new and I'm excited and I'm, my heart is on my sleeve and I'm, I'm teary-eyed. And one of the jobs that I had to do is I had to write the uh, toe tags mm. that would go on the cadavers uh, before the bags came up. And I would have to make sure that uh, I did a check of everything, if they wore dentures, if all of those things. And um, I remember hearing someone in healthcare, a couple people saying, I don't feel like dealing with this family, I'm tired. I, and another person saying, could somebody just describe what they look like? And, I, and then with another death I heard it and I thought, in order to survive this industry, I'm gonna have to be, my heart cannot be so much out there. Uh, and if it is, um, I won't last long in the industry. But I was always interested in change and so change to, the, to majoring in sociology. This goes into uh, a question that a staff member actually submitted. So they asked, you are a mother, a wife, a minister, a counselor, a poet, a performer, an artist, a public speaker, a scholar, yeah, yeah, an yeah. activist. We just found out that you're a brain surgeon. Yes, yes, in my own mind, yes, 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 yes. yes. How do you balance so many of those hats? Well, you can't do all of those at the same time. I can only do this now. Mm. And so I make this choice for this moment. This now is what I have. Um, and I do get overwhelmed that I've had to make those choices. For me, the, the best job that I've ever had, the thing that I think I'm learning to be the best at is to be a mother. Uh, I say that up front. I say it before I have anybody ask me about all those other titles because I chose that position and it re involves really bringing up people to be ultimately themselves and to be a professor is an extension of that. So um, I don't do everything at the same time, and I don't do everything well. Um, I know that I will fail at some things, and there's some things that I wish that I could do more of. Um, the older I get, the more intentional I am about my time, and the more comfortable I am with saying no, and I will disappoint, and that's all right. So right now, this week, if I was to give you the schedule, you'll probably say, oh my gosh, but I know I have now, and I'm enjoying now. Now, this is another student submitted question yes. right here. Um, and coincidentally, we have the lovely text right here. So it says, the question is, tell us about your book and what was the best experience you had heart, uh, writing it? Black Gardenas, collection of poems, stories and sayings from a woman's heart. Okay, um, thank you. I was not intending to write a book. I write for myself and I was writing uh, short stories and stories for myself. The best part of it is when I realized I had a collection and I had enough courage to share it with, mm. with others. Um, I think that allowed me to grow, it allowed me to move to a place that the little girl who had to stand up in front of her parents had to get past and she had to be her authentic self. So it allowed me to be a, a full woman, so I, I'm pleased with that. Um, there's much work to still do. I'm still learning. This is not something that I know how to do well, and so I'm learning. Can you talk a little bit about the, your favorite aspect of the students that you work with here at this oh institution? Oh, my goodness. I, I adore the students of NJCU. They bring the complexity of um, their identity, their history, their struggle to the table. They speak with authenticity about who they are. There's a richness to the classroom because of it. And there's also a struggle because of it. And I think I grow in that struggle, how to then um, engage students with um, high school backgrounds that aren't the kind of backgrounds that some from privilege have. And how do you then look at that student and say, all right, you're here. And I keep the expectations up here. I keep them up here because I believe that if we don't, we do a disservice. Mm.